Hello everyone. Welcome to screencast number 16. In this screencast, we will explore Chip, a recently released $9 computer. Along with showing you around Chip's brand new interface, the screencast will also cover a tutorial to get you started with easy time-lapse photography using Chip as a powerful processor. I chose to elaborate on this particular topic as being a huge fan of time lapses myself. I personally have struggled with similar ways to make time lapses easy. And Chip makes the whole process seem like a cakewalk. So now that we know the agenda of today's screencast, let's begin with Chip. As you will understand at the first look of Chip's interface, it is based on Linux. The Chip OS, as they call it, is a derivation of Debian. It has a clean wallpaper when it first boots up, but you'll feel the lack of the recycle bin and the computer icons if you're coming from Windows. But that can be made to appear on the desktop by simply right-clicking, going into desktop settings and selecting the icons that would be displayed on desktop. As you can see, the home and trash icons has already appeared on my desktop. Now Chip has all its applications listed under the context menu and along with that it also has a menu on the upper taskbar. When you click the menu on the taskbar, a list of applications nicely sorted into categories will appear for you to choose from. It also has some nice shortcuts for several of the frequently used applications. It has a quick access for terminal, file manager and web browser. Along with these essential applications, it also has a few more important apps like AB Word and GNOME Player. Now you might get confused seeing some extra applications like VLC and Audacity on my list. These apps do not come bundled with Chip, but they can be installed via the Synaptic software installer which can be found under the system submenu. Once you open up the Synaptic software installer, you will be asked for the system password. By default, the password is CHIP, all in lowercase, if you haven't changed it already. When you enter the password, you'll be presented with a list of apps to choose from. There, you can search for the required software from the search option. It will take some time to search. And once you get the search tab, you can mark it for installation, update or removal and apply the changes later. If you are familiar with terminal and its commands, apps can also be installed via the apt-get command. And we are going to do just that. For our little project regarding capturing time lapses, we'll need a small piece of software called GPhoto 2. This will enable us to connect with the camera and execute commands related to the project. A detailed documentation of GPhoto 2 and the related commands can be found on the GPhoto website. Now to install GPhoto 2, we'll fire up the terminal emulator from the taskbar menu and type the command sudo apt-get install gphoto2. I already have gphoto2 installed on my system, therefore it needn't be installed again. But if you don't have it on your system, you'll be seeing a list of commands executed and dependencies downloaded before it finally says successfully installed gphoto2. After this, you can check the installation by typing the command gphoto2 space hyphen hyphen version. So this is the standard command for checking the version of any installed software, just suffixing hyphen hyphen version along with the command. Now after this is done, let me go ahead and close the terminal. If you look at the taskbar carefully, you will see an icon for Wi-Fi. Now I already have my network configured, hence it connected directly to my home Wi-Fi system. But if you are not connected to the network, do connect to the network as being connected to the network will be an essential part of this whole tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be attempting to run chip headless, that is with no external components except the camera. So being connected to a local network will help us to execute the commands wirelessly. 
And once this is done, we are done with chip for now. We'll move on to my Mac for the next part of this video, that is capturing time lapses. Now as described by the makers of chip, chip is the world's first $9 computer. Chip is currently available for pre-order starting from $9 and the orders will ship June 2016. Now last year, a startup called Next Thing Company based out of Oakland, California announced a Kickstarter campaign for Chip. The campaign was hugely popular and was overfunded by at least 200%. And unlike many other campaigns on Kickstarter, this campaign delivered whatever it promised. Now a detailed documentation of Chip is available on their website to read from. Here everything is described starting from getting started with Chip to booting chip, connecting accessories and other advanced settings and operations. Now if you remember, we installed a small piece of software called GPhoto 2 on our chip. So this software was basically to help us interface our cameras with the chip. Now GPhoto 2 is a regularly updated piece of software and all details about it is available on their website gphoto.org. You can get a detailed documentation release notes and other important information about GPhoto 2 on this website. Now to check if your camera is compatible with GPhoto 2 or not, you can head over to this website where all the cameras supported by GPhoto 2 is listed. Now if your camera isn't on this list, then probably it's not supported by GPhoto 2. By the way, GPhoto 2 supports 2264 cameras and media players. So to check whether your camera is listed or not, just go ahead and search the page. I'll be using EOS 700D for this video. Now as you can see, luckily my camera is listed here. So I am all set to go with my camera. Now that we have confirmed our camera's compatibility with G Photo 2, let's go ahead and have a look at the chip hardware itself before we start executing commands and capturing time lapses. On the first look of chip, you'll instantly recognize its similarity to Arduino. Chip has an uncased look similar to Arduino and also has the pins to connect external devices. It is a powerful R8 1GHz processor and a 512MB RAM along with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules built on board. Along with a good amount of RAM, it also has a 4GB high-speed storage built on board. It also has an analog video and audio out interface along with a USB 2.0 port and a mini USB port for power. Now in the box along with chip, a nice audio video output cable is provided so that you can connect your chip to any display which has the RCA input method enabled. Now along with this, you can also order an HDMI shield or a VGA shield to connect the chip to VGA or HDMI enabled devices. There is a plastic casing in the bottom attached with a single screw for managing the heat from the processor. Now let's go ahead and connect the power supply. The power supply can be anything starting from a mobile charger to a simple mini USB cable connected to a power bank or another computer. If the power supply is properly connected, then a violet light should glow up on board. And once this is done, there only remains our camera to connect. Now if your camera is compatible with GPhoto 2, you can simply go ahead and connect the camera via the USB cable provided and we are ready to go. Once all the connections are done, let's go back to our Mac to execute some commands. So once we have made all the connections and given power to our chip, let's go ahead and open up terminal to execute the commands that is required to capture time lapses. Now before we start executing commands, you need to make sure that the chip and the computer you are running commands from is connected on the same local network. If you remember I mentioned before, we are going to use the SSH protocol to connect to chip locally and then execute commands on chip. So that will enable us to run chip headlessly. So for that, it is of utmost importance that both the computers be connected on the same local network. So we'll enter the SSH shell by typing the command SSH, chip's username that is chip followed by the local address of chip which is chip.local. Once I execute this command, it will ask for chip's password which is chip chip by default. And once I enter the password, I am now logged into chip. And now I can execute commands which will be run directly on chip. 
first let's test the connection by running a list directory command as you can see it lists all the directories and files that are there on my chip so now that we have made sure that the connection is solid let's go ahead and test g402 so we'll start by typing the command g402 followed by list cameras so this will again give me the list of all the cameras that is supported by g402 you can again check for your compatibility here but nevertheless i'll go on to my next command so i'll detect with this command that whether any cameras are connected to my chip or not so i'll type g402 auto detect so as you can see nothing seems to be connected and that's because my camera isn't turned on so i'll turn on my camera and now if i run this command again you can see my canon eos 700d is connected to a usb port now let's capture our first image with g402 to do that we'll type the command g402 again followed by capture image so once you've done that it will auto focus and will store it in the local memory card of the camera but we don't want that in case of our time lapses we want to save it in chips local memory or a mounted hard disk or hard drive that is connected via a powered usb hub now in this video i'll not be covering how to mount and unmount hard drives or flash drives but you can always mail me and i'll be happy to help you with the commands for now we'll download all the images into chips local memory itself so to do that i can just add capture image and download i can set an interval of five seconds and I can set the number of frames it will capture to 10. If I don't specify this, it will capture infinitely and it will only stop if I manually cancel the command. I can also specify a file name format by adding file name and the format will be img underscore followed by four random numbers percentage 4n followed by the extension jpg. Now if I run this command, what g 2 will do is capture image save it onto the camera's local memory then download the image from the camera to chips local memory and then it will also delete the image that has been captured in the camera's local memory so that seems pretty cool so let's execute this command and you can see 10 images being captured this will take a little bit of time roughly over 50 seconds So now we have captured the images into chips local directory and now you know how you can capture images into chips local directory but if we want to specify a particular folder in which to capture the images we can do that by moving into a particular folder for example i'll move into my pictures folder and inside the pictures folder i have created a folder called time lapse specifically to capture the images and i can list the files there you can see nothing is there inside this folder that means it's empty now I can run the command again and it will capture again a set of 10 photographs, let it capture. So now that everything is done, if we list the directory structure again, you can see there are 10 images specifically captured into this folder. But we don't want to keep these images inside chip only. We have to be able to copy these images into our PC or Mac after capturing the images. So for that we need to open a new terminal window and we will use the command scp. We will recursively copy everything that is inside that folder and then we will specify where this folder resides. So inside chip.local and now we will specify the particular folder inside home, inside chip, there is a folder called pictures, inside that we have the time lapse folder and we want to copy the whole folder onto our desktop so if i run this command it will ask for chips password again which is again chip chip and now you can see each image being copied individually to our desktop and if you notice on my desktop already a folder called time lapse has been created now since chips read and write power is a little slower than other computers and also everything is being transferred over wi-fi the transfer speeds will be a little low so it will take some time to transfer all the images let's wait and see what happens so now as you can see we have copied all the files successfully into the time lapse folder on our desktop so let's go ahead and close the terminal 
by quitting everything and now if we open up our time lapse folder you can see 10 very specific images on the folder and if I open up an image you can see the images being captured completely wirelessly headless with the help of chip so now that we have captured a small 10 frame time lapse using our Mac let's try and replicate the same process on a Windows PC Replicating this process on Windows is not as easy as it is on a Mac. Windows doesn't support SSH natively, therefore we need a third-party software. But not to worry, there's already a third-party software in place which recreates the Linux environment on Windows. The software is called Sigwin which is available for download at sigwin.com. Once you have downloaded the setup, you can go ahead and install it. You'll need an internet connection throughout the installation procedure since it downloads all the data from the internet. Now one thing you have to make sure while you install Sigwin that you definitely search for OpenSSH and install the OpenSSH plugin for Sigwin. And once you've done that and installed Sigwin, you're all ready to go to execute the commands. I already have Sigwin installed on my PC. So I'll fire up Sigwin and we'll start by logging into the chip's interface. So we'll say SSH followed by chip at the rate here for some reason chip.local doesn't work so we'll specify the IP address that is 192.168.0.103 So this IP address will be the IP that is assigned by your router to your chip. In my case it is 192.168.0.103 And once I've done that I'm successfully logged into chip after entering the password chip chip all in lowercase. Now once I've done that, I'll check the connection by typing ls. Okay, everything is listed properly. So my connection is solid. I'll first check G photo 2 again. So G photo 2 auto detect. Okay, so my camera is detected as well. So we are all ready to go. I will change the directory to pictures, time lapse. Now I'll start with my command G photo 2 capture image and download interval 5 seconds number of frames 10 and I'll not specify any file name format this time and once I run the command as you can see images are being captured okay so now that we are done with the 10 images let's go ahead and try to copy the images back onto our PC. Now to do that, I'll first log out of this session of chip and then I'll again use the scp command. But here on Windows, you need to take care while specifying the download location on your PC. Since Linux file system and Windows file system are completely different. But Sigmund makes this a lot easier. So we'll start by typing scp and since we want to copy the whole directory of time lapse, we will specify a parameter minus r so it will recursively copy everything and then chips username followed by the local address and we'll specify the directory home chip pictures and time lapse so once we have done that we will specify the local directory now Sigwin has created a new type of file system specifically for the Linux environment and we can find our C drive at slash sig drive slash C slash users and we are navigating to our desktop now slash my username slash desktop and once we have done that I can just execute the command and the copying begins. Again, it'll take some time since the transfer speeds are not so fast. Okay, now that the copying is done, you can see again that a time lapse folder has been created on my desktop. And if I open up the folder, you can see again the images captured have been copied wirelessly from chip. Now that we have achieved our goal successfully, both on the Mac and the PC, Let's go ahead and try to achieve this on some mobile devices. Now replicating the same process on Android is not as difficult as it seems. You just need to download an application called Server Auditor from the Play Store 
and once you've done that the following process is just a cakewalk now let's just open up a server auditor and there you can see the list of hosts now since we don't have any added host we need to add a new host from the plus button down there we can give it an alias name we'll call it chip for our convenience now it asks for an username okay so the username is chip now it asks for the host name now host name will be the local IP that has been provided by the router to your chip in my case it is 192.168.0.103 so with that done, we just need to enter the password that is chip chip and now we are connected to chip. If I open up this server, it will log in and say that we are connected to chip now. You can again run the command ls to check our connection. Okay, so everything seems fine. Now we can test the g 2 command by auto detecting all the cameras that are connected. Okay, so now you can see our US 700T is connected to USB port that seems nice now we'll execute the final command before that we need to change the directory so we'll change directory to pictures and inside pictures we have our time-lapse folder now we'll enter our final command g402 and we'll set the number of frames this time to 5 and this time will not set any specified file name let's just run the command and as you can see the images are being captured and after five images it has stopped so here with a mobile device there's no point in trying to copy the files over to the mobile so let's just log out of this session so now that we can capture time lapses from the android device as well so why leave our ios device so let's go ahead and replicate the same thing on our iOS device. Now for iOS, the same software is available for download from the App Store. Now if I find Server Auditor on my iPhone and go into Server Auditor, you can see it gives me a notification that start by adding a new host. So I'll go and add a new host. So again, I'll give it an alias of chip. The username will be chip again. The host name will be 192.168.0.103. The password will be chip all in lowercase. So I'll save the host and get into the host. Again, you can see a similar interface like in Android. I'll check the connection by typing ls. Okay, my connection is solid. I'll check gphoto by typing gphoto followed by auto detect so g4 is solid as well now let's change the directory and run the final command okay the final command will be g402 capture image and download I'll set the interval to 5 seconds and the number of frames to 5 Now you can see the images are being captured and copied onto chip. So with this we come to an end to today's screencast. Let's open terminal for one last time. Let's log into chip again with the password chip chip all in lowercase and let's power off chip before we end this screencast. Again it will ask for the password and though you can't see it my chip has been powered off. So that was all for this screencast. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up to it. If you like my videos in general, please subscribe to my channel. You were watching screencast number 16. This is Upaman News signing off. Thank you.